you can have app icons anywhere on the home screen grid you have themed icons now you can record calls there's a t9 dialer has ios 18 finally turned into android well thankfully ios 18 is more than just that and there's a lot happening under the hood we've already installed it and here are the awesome things about the new ios software and some not so awesome things i'll talk about the customizations that are possible some new features some hidden features and of course apple intelligence if you're here for the first time i'm ashat you're watching track and take english your destination for detailed incisive gadget reviews all right, talking about customizations, yes, you can now move icons anywhere on the home screen grid. But that's not it. You can change the size of the icon to just small or large. And if you switch on the dark mode, then dark themed icons show up on your screen, which is nice. And you also have tinted icons. We tried out tinted icons and some icons don't look great in this mode. So I would skip using it. I think Google does material you themed icons better in my opinion. There's a new control center which has a multi-page controls layout and there's a detailed controls gallery as well. And that's not it. Apple will allow third-party developers to create their own controls finally which has always been present on Android, by the way. Talking about customizations, the lock screen shortcuts at the bottom, which were limited to Torch app and Camera app, well, you can change it to whatever you want. No accidentally pressing the Torch app now. There are a few more visual changes. For example, the text formatting has been improved now, so you get underline and strike through as well. Tap back in the Messages app actually gives you more options for emojis and a lot more features. I don't know how many people use Tap back, but I do use the Apple Messages app with a few people who have iPhone and it does come in handy. The Photos app was in desperate need of a new design and Apple has redesigned it completely. So your photo grid is the top half, a big chunk of the top half and a small chunk of the bottom half is your entire photo library that has been organized into different collections now. So there's a new recent days option which bunches up all your recent photos in days. For example, all the photos I took yesterday will show up in yesterday's photos. There's the people and pets option. There are a few pinned collections and there are of course memories as well. By the way, there's a filter button now that helps you hide screenshots. So they're not part of that photo grid, which is very, very useful in my opinion. In the mails app, automatic categorization now happens and prioritization as well, which is nice. You now get topographical maps with trail networks and hiking routes of I think 63 parks in the US, not relevant to us. By the way, there's a new tap to cash feature, which I feel should come to India really soon because you can just tap somebody else's phone and the cash will transfer. All right, talking about the new features, the one that I really, really like is the fact that you can lock apps now by default in the system. You don't need a shortcut for it. Yeah, lock your app, keep your face ID, that's it. You can even hide your apps if you're using something that you don't want somebody else to see. <coughs> Tinder. Oh, by the way, a small footnote was made at the keynote about RCS support finally coming to iOS. If you're now standard in a Wi-Fi less or cellular network less area, then you can send messages through the satellite on iPhone 14 and iPhone 15. There's also a new passwords app. Thing that Apple used to do in the background is now out in the foreground as a passwords app. And that I think is very, very useful. Now, let me tell you about things that Apple didn't tell you about iOS 18. For example, now within the settings app, you can see that apps have been bunched like this. It's not like a grid which has all the apps. And the settings app has been redesigned now. And there are a bunch of new accessibility features as well, which were showcased earlier. For example, you have music haptics now. Also, I noticed one more very interesting thing. When you press the volume down or the volume up button, there is a bulge-like animation on the bezel, which makes you feel like the bezels are getting expanded. These are just very tiny Apple things that, you know, Apple only does with the iPhone, which is damn cool, I think. Another tiny, very tiny implementation is the fact that the torch now has a width option. Yeah, which I find very, very interesting. Also, there is a T9 dialer inside the phone app. Yeah, it has happened. There should be a series. Things Apple could have implemented earlier, but still hasn't. Yeah, <laughs> seriously. All right, finally, let's talk about Apple intelligence, which is not here yet on iOS 18. It's coming in fall in the developer beta and for the public, it will come in summer. So there's a bit of time and it requires a lot of processing power. Even iPhone 15 users won't get Apple intelligence. You'll have to be on an iPhone 15 Pro or a 15 Pro Max because it leads a lot of compute power. First things first, you get improved Siri with chat GPT 4.0 integration. So yeah, you don't need to open ChatGPT separately for your queries. You can do that with Siri itself, which is nice. By the way, with this, you can now get conversational context and on-screen a 
awareness, which means that Siri will know what's happening on screen for it to give you answers on the basis of that. There's a new Gen Moji to create custom emojis. I am too old for that. Of course, Apple's generative images are called Image Playground and you can create images fresh with prompts and they look okay. I think Snazzy Lab's tweet perfectly summarizes it. Yeah, uh, you know the pixel eraser and object eraser that are present on, you know, Google and Samsung? That's image cleanup on Apple now. So you can remove unwanted objects in the image. You get natural language phrases to search inside the Photos app as well, which I think was nice. You can also create a memory movie on Photos with prompts. That is something I really want to try out. By the way, remember the call recording feature? Yeah, that's going to be a part of the audio and call transcribe feature, uh, which will be able to summarize your calls. And for that, it needs to record the call. But when it does record the call, it will integrate the person on the other end and there are a bunch of different writing tools which I felt was absolutely incredible and the way it was implemented was really well done because it's across the system so wherever you write you will get all the writing tools for example you can proofread you can summarize with key points you can spell check and you can have different tones for writing a particular message so if you feel that some message needs to have a more professional tone or a casual tone you can do that you get option for smart replies in emails and summarized emails as well for anybody who uses the email app that should come in handy and Apple intelligence can also prioritize emails on its own. In fact, it can also prioritize the notifications screen. Yeah, that was much needed because notifications are still a mess on Apple at the moment, even currently. So once Apple intelligence comes in, it will be able to prioritize it and bunch it together. By the way, the notes app can calculate automatically for you. Math notes are here and it works exceptionally well. In fact, this is very similar to what we could do with search. So which is damn nice. So iOS 18 is definitely packed to the gills with features. Some features that should have already been present on previous iOS versions, but I'm glad they're here. And some features that might still not be here. Which are those? Let me know in the comment section below. Some things that Apple or you know iOS still cannot do in 2024. I'm excited about Apple intelligence. I'm excited about all the new things that you can do with iOS. And I think this makes iPhone less boring now. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section below. I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, keep tracking and stay safe.